The ultimate goal of Pokemon Legends Arceus is to complete the Pokedex. I've searched far and wide to catch them all, and now it's time to show you where to find all 242 Pokemon in order to beat the game and see the true ending. What's happening everyone? It's Abdali here back again with another Pokemon Legends Arceus Tips and Tricks tutorial. Today's video is all about showcasing all the locations of the Pokemon within the game. There's 242 of them and I've searched high and low. I really did. It took me about 55 hours or so, but doing that completely blind. But now you guys have the answers to the test, so let's jump into it and go from there. And thanks so much for supporting the Abdallah merch right over here. Pick up one of these legend tees and look like a boss while wearing it. Now, before we get started, I want to give you guys one huge pro tip that helped me with resetting all of the spawns just in case I'm looking in a specific area and then Pokemon was nowhere to be found. All you have to do is warp back to whatever camp you came from that's nearest to the exit on any of these regions over here. Once you're done warping, simply go all the way out or speak to the professor to go back to Jubilife Village. Now, doing this cutscene right over this way is a little long, but you know what? It's going to be the best way that you're going to get these Pokemon. And then simply turn around right over here and then choose whatever area you were going to. Now, this is the only way that you're going to refresh the spawns in the game outside of catching all the Pokemon in that certain area and forcing the respawns there. I felt that this was absolutely the easiest way to get rare Pokemon like Pichu or Munchlax or any of those really, really hard to find ones. All right, so let's get this show on the road. I'm gonna give you guys the Cliff Notes version of where to find all of them along with the visuals that are provided to you in game. So you'll know exactly which areas of which regions they are available. And if any of these Pokemon require special evolutions, I'll tell you right off the bat. So strap in, this is going to be a wild ride. Here we go. These starters in the game, obviously you're going to start with one of them. The opposite ones are going to be available in post game. And specifically, Rowlet is going to be available in the space-time distortions within Mount Coronet. If you guys don't know what space-time distortions are, definitely take a look at my playlist to learn all about them. Uh, Cyndaquil, right over here, he's either going to be a starter or you can find him in space-time distortions in Crimson Mirelands. Same thing, Oshawott, boom, starter, or you're going to find him in space-time distortions in Alabaster Icelands. Next up is going to be Bidoof and Bee Barrel. These two, they're going to be right on board, and the only way that you're going to uh, get them is to catch them wild or evolve them. Starly, Staravia, Star Raptor, all on screen here. They are basic evolutions through level up. Shinx, Luxio, Luxray. You can find them out in the open, every single one of these, or you can evolve them through level up. We've got Wurmple, you've got Silcoon, you've got Beautifly, Cascoon, and Dustox. This entire set of Pokemon is pretty much based off of evolving them, or you can find them out in the open. Ponyta and Rapidash are going to be available in the Obsidian Fieldlands, as you can see on screen right over that way. Next up is going to be the Eevee and the Eeveelutions. Eevee, as you can see, you can find in Alabaster Icelands and Cobalt Coastlands. Now, all of these different Eeveelutions, you can use all the respective stones, or you can find them in space-time distortions. If you played any of the previous Pokemon games, then you know exactly how to evolve all of them. I've got a video on my channel that showcases all the Eevee evolutions, so definitely take a look at that. Right over here, Zubat and Golbat, they're going to be plentiful on the overworld. And Crobat is going to be a little bit different. You can level up your Golbat with friendship in order to get a Crobat, or you can find them out in the open right over here in Alabaster Icelands and Coronet Highlands. Next up is Drifloon and Drifblim. These guys are all over the place, specifically found at night. So you're not going to have to worry about leveling these guys up. So you're all set with that. Cricketot, they're all over the place. You can level them up and you are good. Buizel, you can find all over the first area. And same thing with Floatzel. They level up normally. Now right over here, Burmy is going to be a very hard one for you to find. Simply because they are so stuck in shaking trees. If you see a tree shaking, you can go ahead and throw your Pokemon at it. It'll crack out and then odds are you're going to get one of the three different forms of Burmy or one of the three different forms of Wormadan. Uh, yeah, Obsidian Fieldlands is where you're going to find Mothim and you can find it in Cobalt Coastlands and Coronet Highlands as well. 
Geodude and Graveler are all over the place, so you're not going to have a hard time with that. If you're looking at Evolving Graveler, you can use your merit points to buy a linking cable if you want to, or you can go over to the Boulder Roll Ravine in Coordinate Highlands to find Golem. Easy. Uh, next up is Stantler, available all throughout Coronet Highlands and Deer Track Heights. If you want to evolve Stantler into Word Deer, the brand new Hisuian form, you're going to use a move called Psy Shield Bash 20 times against Pokemon in the Agile style. And once you do so, you can click the Evolve button and you've got yourself a brand new Hisuian Word Deer. Next up is going to be Munchlax. This guy was so hard. Oh my gosh, finding him in Deer Track Heights was kind of annoying. So use that soft reset method that I showed you earlier. If you want to evolve him, it's pretty much friendship during the daytime. Uh, Snorlax, you can find an Alpha Snorlax in Sand Gem Flats, very simply. Paras Parasect, these two are all over the place, so no worries there. Pichu is relatively rare over by Nature's Pantry, so keep your eye out for that. And if you want the Pichu to evolve into Pikachu, you can use uh, a friendship, pretty much. And Pikachu evolves into Raichu with a Thunderstone. Likewise, if you don't want to waste a Thunderstone, you could find Raichu floating around in the golden lowlands of Crimson Mirelands. Right over here, Abra, one of the hardest Pokemon to capture in the game, simply because as soon as it sees you, it teleports away. Go ahead and level it up normally to a Kadabra, and with the Kadabra, you can use an item called the Linking Cable, and the Linking Cable is going to be available in these shops. And uh, yeah, you're going to get an Alakazam by doing so. If you don't want to do that and you want to shortcut it, head on over to Sand Gem Flats and you can find an Alakazam outright. Now, one of the older starters uh, from Diamond and Pearl series, boom, right over here, is going to be Chimchar. Yeah, he's going to be available at Raminus Island. That island is filled with Chimchar, so it's going to be pretty fun to see Chimchar and Monferno over there. There's even an Alpha Infernape on that exact same island in Obsidian Fieldlands. But Neri, right over here, all over the place, if you want this thing to level up, Keep it in your team and battle with it for friendship to evolve it into Lopunny. Likewise, you can just find Lopunny floating around so you don't have to waste your time with that. Cherubi, pretty hard to find, not gonna lie. Um, this one is a tree encounter. So whenever you see a tree that's shaking um, in Obsidian Fieldlands or uh, Coordinate Highlands or Alabaster Icelands, there's a chance that a Cherubi will come out. Same thing with a Cherim. So whenever you see a tree shaking, you have to knock it out. Psyduck right over this way, easy, all over the place by the water. If you level them up, you can get yourself a Golduck or catch them outright. Uh, here we go, Combi, very simple, all over the place, you will not miss them. Vespiquen, you can find an alpha version floating around in Crimson Mirelands. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, Scyther, uh, the first area where the first noble is, you're just gonna see like an entire area full of Scyther over there by Grand Tree Arena. If you want to evolve Cleaver, wow, evolve it into Cleaver, you're gonna need an item called the Black Augurite. So keep on looking around through space-time distortions and you'll eventually pick one up. Or use your ride Pokemon in order to find one on the ground. Now, likewise, uh, with Scissor, you can find them in space-time distortions in Alabaster Icelands, or you can use a metal coat on your Scyther to evolve him. Heracross can be found in Coronet Highlands all over the place, so not that big of a deal. Uh, Mime Jr. is a little bit more rare of a spawn. It's uh, kind of hard to find in Obsidian Fieldlands, so keep your eyes peeled because that thing is super small. If you want to level him up into Mr. Mime, all you have to do is make sure that he knows the move Mimic. So access your moves from the menu, teach him Mimic, and then click on the Evolution button into Mr. Mime. Likewise, you can go through Sand Gym Flats and find him that way. Eye Palm all over the place. You will not miss him. Same thing with Ambit Palm. You'll see them in Al Alabaster Icelands and Cobalt Coastlands all over the place. Uh, next up is Magikarp. These docile Pokemon are all over the place in Lake Verity and Fabled Spring and Obsidian Falls. So find them and catch them. Gyarados, likewise, you don't have to worry about leveling up any Magikarp in this game because Gyarados is all over the place. So find them there. Um, same thing, Shellos and Gastrodon, very, very common among the Cobalt Coastlands. So pretty much look around that spot. Same thing with all these water Pokemon. Quillfish, you're going to find them in Cobalt Coastlands in the water. Now, if you want to evolve 
your Hisuian Quillfish into Overquill, what you're gonna need to do is use a move called Barb Barrage 20 times in the strong style against random Pokemon in order for Overquill to be here for you. So very interesting. Just go beat up some Bidoof 20 times with that move and you're good to go. Happeny, right over this way. You can find them. Now keep in mind, they're very hard to catch simply because they scare easily. Same thing with Chansey and Blissey. You will find them all through the screen over that way. If you want to evolve the Happeny into Chansey, you can use an Oval Stone during the daytime. And Chansey evolves into Blissey by friendship. Uh, next up is Boodoo. You'll find them all over the place. If you want to evolve a Boodoo into a Roselia, you can use Friendship during the daytime, and Roselia evolves into Roserade with a shiny stone. Likewise, you can catch them all outright, so that's not necessary. Carnivine, you'll find them all over the place. Not a problem at all. Uh, Petalil, definitely look around the home of Trials or Cotton Singe Prairie for them. And if you want a Petalil to evolve into the brand new Lilligant, all you have to do is use a Sunstone on it. Very simple. You'll find plenty of sunstones on the ground. All right, Tangela, right over this way. If you level up Tangela so it learns the move Ancient Power, it will evolve into Tangrowth. Likewise, you can go ahead and catch one outright. Uh, Barboach and Whiskash are going to be in Wayward Cave. They're very easy spawns, likewise in Crimson Mireland. Uh, you're going to see tons of Krogunk and Toxicroak over in Crimson Mireland, so no worries about that. Uh, Ralts and Kirlia are going to be all over the place. You can find them easily in Snowpoint Temple or Crimson Mirelands. Just be mindful that they're very sensitive and they will run away. Um, if you want to evolve your uh, your Crimson... I'm sorry. If you want to evolve your Kirlia into a Gardevoir, you're going to need to just level it up. And if your Kirlia is a male and you have a Dawnstone, level it up and uh, use the Dawnstone and it'll evolve into a Gardevoir. But no worries about that, it's complicated. You can go over to Snowpoint Temple and catch yourself an Alpha Gardevoir and a Gallade and you'll be all set to go. So anyway, a Gardevoir is in Heart's Crag, Gallade is in Snowpoint Temple. Next up is gonna be Yanma. They're all over the place in Crimson Mirelands. Uh, and same thing with Yanmega, not a problem with finding those. Hippopotas and Hippowdon, uh, Crimson Mirelands. And you'll also see them in the Celestica Trail in Cornet Highlands. Pachirisu's got his own dedicated meadow, so easy to find that way. Stunky, all over the place, and same thing with Skuntank in certain areas, you will not miss them. Teddy Ursa and Ursa's Ring, they have an area dedicated to their name called Ursa's Ring, so you'll be able to find that. Now, if you want to get the brand new Hisuian form of Ursa Ring, which is called Ursa Luna, all you have to do is find a specific item on the ground called a peat block. Now you can use Ursa Luna's ride in order to find that on the ground. But once you have the peat block, use it on Ursa Ring only when there's a full moon outside. Meaning, go ahead and sleep in the tent until nighttime, take a look and see if the moon's out, or just jump into the menu, see if you can evolve. And then if it's not the same thing, then sleep until nighttime again, and again, and again, and again, until you get it. Gumi, right over this way. Easy, easy. They're so all over the place in Ancient Quarry and Home of Trials. Uh, if you want to evolve the Gumi into Sliggu, which is a brand new Hisuian form of it, um, yeah, easy. Just level it up to 40. Uh, the Sliggu, and if you want that to go into a Gudra, you're going to have to go to level 50 while it's raining. Likewise, you can just outright catch a Gudra over an Ancient Quarry, so not a big deal. Onyx, they're all over the place in Celestica Trail, and while you're in Celestica Trail, you will see a Steelix over there. So don't waste your Metal Coat, catch the Steelix outright. Uh, Rhyhorn and Rhydon are also in Celestica Trail, definitely look over there. And you'll see a gigantic Rhyperior straight over in Sacred Plaza, so don't waste any of your merit points buying the item to evolve him. Bonsly is a little bit harder. Honestly, I found my Bonsly in Cloudpool Ridge, so keeping an eye for that. Uh, but Pseudo Wudo, you'll find him in Cloudpool Ridge or Celestica Ruins, standing very still, looking exactly like a tree. Lick a tongue over here. Oh my gosh, Lick a tongue is all over the place. As well as Licky Licky. So go to Alabaster Islands and go to Avalanche Slopes and you'll find them no problem. Togepi, a little bit harder to find, not gonna lie. Uh, Bather's Lagoon is where I found mine. And you can also find them in Tranquility Cove. I found an alpha version in the Cotton Singe Prairie, ironically, and it was gigantic. Uh, Togetic is kind of interesting. You can, fl you can find Togetic actually flying in the air. So use a jet ball in order to capture him. Uh, same thing with Togekiss. Just kind of look around 
around in the air and you'll be able to find them. Um, yeah, they're flying very high up. So Togekiss is in Lake Verde. You'll find Togetic in uh, Cotton Sedge Prairie, Boulder Rose Slope, or Tranquility Cove. Uh, Turtwig, hey, an old starter. We remember him. He's got a dedicated area called uh, Droning Meadow, and uh, you'll be able to see him right over there. He's the, literally the only Pokemon in that area. And of course, evolve him into Grodal in order to get that. Now, Torterra, there's an alpha version of him in the Home of Trials. So catch that just so you don't have to waste your time evolving. Now, Porygon is going to be a Pokemon that's available exclusively to space-time distortions in Crimson Mirelands. And if you want to evolve him into Porygon 2, you're going to need an upgrade item. Literally, the item's called Upgrade. They could sell it at the shop for merit points. And, go taking it a step further, you can do the Dubious Disc with Porygon Z. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. So, that's a lot of evolution. But, knowing you guys, you'll be able to find those things very easily on the ground. A uh, Ghastly right over here. You're going to find them all over the place at nighttime. Evolve that into Haunter by level up. And if you want Haunter to evolve into Gengar, you can use a linking cable. Now, there is an alpha um, Gengar floating around. You could find that. And also, if you're in space-time distortions in Coronet Highlands, there's a chance that a Gengar will come out. So you can save yourself a linking cable. Spiritomb. Oh my gosh. I've got a specific dedicated tutorial based on how to get this Pokemon. You're going to have to take a quest where you have to find 106 Wisps that are in the overworld. So if you remember from the previous Pokemon games where you went around and you found 100 Diglett, yeah, it's the exact same concept, but it's returned in here. And it's very annoying. But anyway, I got a visual guide that I'm going to show you, so definitely take a look at the playlist. Uh, right over this way, Murkrow is going to be uh, evolved with a Duskstone. Other than that, you could find them outright. Same thing with Honchkrow. You can see them flying around in the air. Unknown, these guys are are scattered all across the Hisui region. If you take a look at the entire Pokedex uh, right over here and you press the Y button, you'll be able to see all of the different locations of where they are. There's a little unknown riddle in the unknown language and it kind of shows exactly where they're all at. If you're curious about them, I've got a video coming out very soon that showcases all of those for unknown. Next up is going to be Sfeel. You can see Sfeel right over here in Ginkgo Landing. Very easy. And uh, Isle Spy Shore is where you'll find Celio. And Walrin is hanging out with those guys as well. And of course, all the water Pokemon are pretty much found in this area. Remoraid and Octillery. Remoraid's actually in the water, while Octillery is on the beach. Uh, speaking of on the beach, you'll find Skaroopy and Drapion in that exact same area. Now, if you fly a little bit higher in Cobalt Coastlands, you can find Growlithe, the Hisuian form. That's so fun. And if you want Growlithe to evolve into Hisuian Arcanine, all you have to do is use a Firestone. It's that easy. Um, and in that same area, you'll find tons of Glammeow uh, right over in the Crossing Slope and Veilstone Cape. Same thing with Perugly. Machop is all over the place. He's very docile. He likes to come up to you and flex his muscles. Same thing with Machoke. Um, you'll be able to find an Alpha Machamp over in Arena's Approach, so catch him accordingly. Likewise, if you want to evolve one, you can use the Linking Cable. Uh, next up is going to be Chitat. You'll find Chitat in the Deadwood Haunt. Very easy. And along the way to Deadwood Haunt, you'll also find plenty of Duskull. You'll find Dusclops. Sorry, could you say that again? No, I won't. You'll find Dusclops, you'll find Dusk Noir, uh, there's an Alpha one right over that way, and that's pretty scary right in that area. Uh, next up is going to be Piplup. Yeah, a lot of people are looking for Piplup, and this Pokemon is going to be available in the Spring Path in Cobalt Coastlands. There's typically only one of them there. Evolve it into Prinplup, and if you want a gigantic Empoleon, you can come over this way and you can catch an Alpha over on Isle Spy Shore. Very simple. Uh, Mantike and Mantine are going to be floating around in the water area of Tranquility Cove. Basculin is a little bit more skittish, so be very careful about how you approach those guys in Tranquility Cove or Isle Spy Shore. They're also available in other areas as well. Now, uh, in order to evolve Basculin into Bascul Legion, you're going to need to receive a lot of recoil damage, approximately 300 recoil damage. Now, Basculin has a specific move that he already comes with that you can use. It's kind of like double edge. It gives you a move. So use that as many times as possible to give him that recoil damage. Heal him once or twice, and then you'll be able to evolve him. Uh, next up is going to be Vulpix, a pretty rare spawn on top of the Veilstone Cape. Not too bad. Um, Nine Tails is going to be on Fire Spit Island right outside of the volcano. You'll see an alpha over there. Tentacool and Tentacruel are going to be right over by Lunker's Lair. It's pretty much spawns in the water, along with Finian and Luminian. 
Uh, Magby is a rare spawn on Fire Spit Island right among the Magmar. So keep an eye out for them. Magmortar, on the other hand, you're going to need to take a Magmar and use the Magmarizer on it. Or if you want to try your luck and space-time distortions on Mount Coronet, you can find a Magmortar attacking you there. Magnemite is an exclusive Pokemon. Yeah, that's going to only be found in Cobalt Coastlands uh, space-time distortion. So find a Magnemite there as a static spawn. Uh, same thing with Magneton. Now, Magnezone, on the other hand, you can easily go through and find this guy flying around. He's very, very high up. So keep your eyes to the skies, and he's just kind of floating around doing his own thing. Here we go, Bronzor. Uh, they're all over the place. You'll see them there. Uh, Bronzong, likewise, not a rare Pokemon at all. Elekid, a little bit more rare. You could find him in Alabaster Icelands or Coronet Highlands, uh, but they typically stick around the Electabuzz. And Electivire, you'll absolutely find a specific alpha that's right on Cloudcap Pass, right in the middle. You cannot miss it. Uh, Gligar, all over the place. You'll be able to find him easily. Um, if you want to evolve Gligar, Gligar into Glisker, you're going to have to use a Razor Fang at nighttime. Or you can simply just find a Gliscor in Primeval Grotto. Done. Our Gibble, you guys are here for Gibble. Absolutely, I know I am. You'll be able to find these guys all over Wayward Cave. You'll find them in Clamberclaw Cliffs and Avalanche Slopes. Uh, Gabite, there's going to be a couple of them. You'll see one in uh, Clamberclaw Cliffs that's in Alpha. So yeah, be very, very wary of that. And likewise, if you want a very, very high level Garchomp, head on over to Avalanche Slopes in the very corner of the map and you'll see an Alpha Garchomp and that's gonna be amazing for your team. All right, Nose Pass all over the place in Celestica Ruins. Same thing with Provo Pass. You'll find him in Primeval Grotto. Uh, he's pretty much right in front of the entrance. Hisuian Voltorb is in the Sacred Plaza. You'll find him right over there. And if you want a Hisuian Electrode, what you're going to need to do is use a Leaf Stone in order to evolve him. Yeah, pretty easy. Rotom, on the other hand, is going to be a rare spawn in the Sacred Plaza and Stone Tooth Rose. So keep an eye out for him. And remember, he's got multiple forms, so go ahead and try to collect them all. Chingling is a very common Pokemon. You'll find him in Sacred Plaza or Lake Acuity. Chimeco, same thing. Lake Acuity, you'll find those no problem. Mischievous, you'll find some in the Alabaster Icelands, in the under ice areas. Uh, Miss Magius, check on over Stone Tooth Rose so that you don't have to worry about using a specific Dusk Stone in order to evolve your Mischievous into Miss Magius. Uh, Cleffa, a smaller chance of finding this Pokemon over in Fabled Spring, but you might get it. A little bit more of a rare spawn. So Fabled Spring is where you're going to find all three of these evolutions here. Likewise, if you want your Cleffa to evolve into Clefairy, you're going to have to max out its friendship and use a Moonstone over here to evolve Clefairy into Clefable. Next up is going to be the old school Sneasel variant, which you can find in Space Time Distortions. And you can also find them in Avalug's Legacy, uh, Coronet Highlands, and a whole bunch of other places too. Now, right over here uh, for Sneasler, if you want to evolve your Sneasel, your Hisuian Sneasel, which is going to be a different form altogether. Let's see if I could pull that up right here. Um, yeah, here we go. Do you take the Hisuian form of Sneasel and you give it a Razor Claw? Boom, and it's gonna turn into Sneasler. It's that simple. Um, if you give the regular Sneasel uh, Razor Claw at nighttime, you'll be able to get this uh, Weavile right over this way. Likewise, you can get them in space time distortions. Uh, Snow Runt, wow, this guy's all over the place in the Icelands. You cannot miss him. Uh, it evolves normally into Glalie, and if it is a female uh, and you got a Dawnstone, then right over here, boom, it'll evolve into Frostlass. Kranidos, arguably one of the hardest Pokemon to find simply because it's exclusive to space-time distortions in Mount Coronet. Same thing with Rampardos, Shieldon, and Bastiodon. Uh, Swineup right over this way, all over the Ice Place. Same thing with Piloswine. Mamoswine is in Avalug's Legacy. You'll find a big one right over that way. Uh, Bergmite, super simple, all over the place. You cannot miss it. And when it comes down to Avalug, all you have to do is just level up this Bergmite and you're all set and ready to go. The Snowvers are all over the place. You can evolve them into an Obama Snow or just catch the Obama Snow outright. 
Uh, Zerua, this is a really fun Pokemon. So he is going to be in the underground section of Bone Chill Wastes. So you're going to find him in the little ice area there. Uh, same thing with Zoroark. So good luck. Um, other than that, evolving him is just straight through uh, level up. So good luck with that. Rufflet, right over here, flying all the way around Lake Acuity. You cannot miss that. And uh, there's a Braviary too. If you want to evolve the uh, Rowlet into Braviary, you'll be able to actually find the Braviary like floating around in Lake Acuity or at the very top of Snowpoint Temple. Yeah, he's going to be so easy to find. Just do that. Uh, Riolu, yeah, kind of a rare spawn, but you'll find him in Alabaster Icelands, uh, pretty much right next to the Lucario, so keep that in mind. All right, so now we're going to go into the legendary Pokemon. Now, each of these legendary Pokemon, I'm going to give you guys brief cliff notes, but I've got dedicated videos waiting to be made for every single one of these, so you have a visual guide. But anyway, the Lake Trio is part of the main story. Heatran is going to be part of the post-game experience. Same thing with Regigiga, same thing with Cresselia. Uh, the genies right over this way, Tornadus, Thunderous, Landorus, they're all part of a quest, and they're going to be even harder simply because you have to find them in the overworld based off of different weather conditions, which is so cool. So that being said, um, Tornadus specifically, for Cliff Notes' sake, uh, you can find him in Bone Chill Wastes in Alabaster um, Islands right over this way during a blizzard. Yeah, so there has to be a blizzard happening and you look around and he's over there. Now, Thunderous is going to be the exact same thing, but he's going to be in Cobalt Coastlands by the pillars, those two pillars that kind of look like Pinsir. You'll find him with a huge thunderstorm, and uh, yeah, good luck catching him. And then, of course, right over here, Landorus, you'll find him uh, in Raminus Park in Obsidian Fields, uh, pretty much once you're on that quest. Now, once you've caught all three of these, you're going to have to turn them in, and you'll unlock Enamorous. So you'll be able to find Enamorous in Scarlet Bog in the Crimson Mirelands, and that's part of a quest. Of course, uh, Dialga and Palkia are part of the main story, not too bad. Giratina is going to be part of post-game, so go over to Turnback Cave in Cobalt Coastlands in order to find him. Arceus, you are going to need to collect every single one of the 241 Pokemon within the game. Literally catch them, not just meet them, and you don't need their full Pokemon um, research complete. You just literally need to catch one of every Pokemon. And then, of course, go to the very, very top of the Temple of Sinnoh and beat the game. Congratulations. Uh, Fioni right over here. This Pokemon is going to be part of the Seas Legend request, number 66. You're going to specifically need a Buizel, a Mantike, and an Overquill in your party. You're going to surf through the two pillars in Cobalt Coastlands in the evening, and then you're going to go to Seaside Hollow for the encounter. You're going to get three Fioni and one Manaphy during that specific request. And last but not least, we have the last two that are exclusive for having save data uh, for Pokemon on Sword and Shield, you'll be able to get a Shaman. And lastly, if you have Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl save data on your Nintendo Switch, in post-game, just check the uh, request board, and then boom, you'll get the side quest for Dark Ride. Whoa, now was that a ride or what? Those are the basic Cliff Notes versions of how you're getting all of those Pokemon. It will absolutely help you because trust me, I did all of that blind before the game even came out. And now that you guys have all the notes, you're gonna be all set. So at the end of the day, is it worth it? Oh, absolutely. Look at this thing, Arceus is huge. So collecting every single Pokemon in the game, you're going to net yourself a very awesome Arceus. Wow, we've got a tutorial based on what exactly Arceus can do very, very soon, so stay tuned for it. And thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you out, be sure to smash that like button and share the video with a friend. Take care.